Uh, I'm Daniel Lakovich. I'm the business development manager for Flatweg US. I'm joined by my colleague, John Kingston, beverage manager. And then our friends from uh, Korenko are here to join us as well. Uh, Neil Gorsuch and uh, Mr. Corey. Uh, let me get that. Chris Corey, yep. my apologies, CEO, head engineer of Korenko. Very happy to have you as well. Thank you. Uh, you'll see more contact information at the end of the presentation. So if you'd like to reach out. You can do so then. Uh, while folks are logging in, I'm just going to give a brief introduction of the companies. Uh, Flatweg, we are a separation technologies provider. Separation meaning mainly centrifuges, but we do offer uh, belt presses specifically for fruits and vegetables. So particularly interesting for this topic. Karenko, size reduction equipment uh, provider, uh, mostly custom engineered can be used on a variety of wet or dry ingredients, food, chemical, pharmaceutical industries, lots of options there as well. Uh, the colleagues will give you some more detail on that. Thank you, Daniel. So just give a few more minutes for people to log in. A couple of housekeeping items. As the presentation is happening, at the bottom center of your screen, there's a small Q&A button. If you have any questions, please, Put your questions in that Q&A section and uh, we will look to get to those at the end of the presentation. All right. Um, let's see, we have a couple of folks logged in here. I think we can go ahead and get the show started. Uh, any latecomers can, of course, get the recording, which will be emailed out later. Uh, all right. So once again, thanks for being here uh, for today's presentation on beverage production. Uh, Mr. Kingston is going to go first, and then he's going to pass information to Mr. Gorsuch. So, John, floor is all yours. Please go ahead. Thanks, everybody, for uh, logging in today. Um, Flatwick has been uh, very large in the uh, beverage industry for a long period of time uh, because we're doing a little bit differently than our competition. Our main situation here is for enzyme treated uh, 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 products. We normally will use the canners, but when it comes to fresh, what we call NFC juices, it's predominantly belt presses. So we would be looking at a, a sanitary, what we call a sanitary belt press that can be set up for CIP, can be for set up for very high extraction and for large capacity. Our current scenario has been, you know, as we look at this market in the 50s and 60s, predominantly, we looked at making concentrates. And we have a much uh, uh, younger uh, group of uh, purchasing uh, juices and, and, and juice particulate products. Uh, when I was a kid, and I'm a little bit older than a lot of you, uh, Mom would always tell me to take that frozen can of concentrate out the night before, put it in the sink, and we would make orange juice in the morning. It wasn't the best orange juice. It wasn't like mm -hmm. Tropicana. There wasn't uh, pure premium. There wasn't uh, pulp or pulp edition. It was you got what you got. But at least it was orange, and it, it tasted a little bit of sugar. Today, we want what we call NFC juice, not from concentrate. So as we look into these kinds of uh, products, uh, you have a much better color, you have a much better consistency, much better flavor, and the quality of vitamins that are in those products are make it into the package. As we look at uh, some stats uh, through Europe, we've seen from 2010 in the last you know, 10, 11 years, we've seen a 15% reduction in the amount of people purchasing concentrates. Uh, now the concentrates have been used now for, you know, when you look at sweeteners, people don't want sugar anymore. So they were predominantly using juice concentrate, which really was still sweeteners, but it wasn't like cane sugar going into the package. Um, concentrate uh, loss in, in uh, Europe, 15% in Poland, for instance, we're up to almost 20%. In the US, we're looking as high as almost 
is what concentrate market has dropped. Uh, this slide here uh, is a complete dump press line uh, from the Far East that brought in apple concentrate. This is when uh, these dump presses were put in back, I want to say this was the, the mid 80s. Uh, and we uh, had put in 100 tons an hour of uh, apple juice um, uh, on belt presses. And this was the concentrate that came over that uh, was being purchased, you know, into, uh, you know, the apple market. And the Chinese, you know, had a big push because it was cheaper to send concentrate over than even paying duty than it was to process, uh, you know, in uh, Washington. And for a while, you know, some of the biggest players were buying our, our Chinese concentrate. Today, China has gotten much more affluent. So the, the general populace wants to buy an apple. So there isn't as much apple available. And so we're seeing less and less Chinese concentrate even coming into the US. If we look at a standard process for um, fresh juice, we would have uh, apples come in on a conveyor, then they go through either a mill or a grinder. They come into uh, the bell press. Uh, the, the screw uh, conveyor coming off would be for pumice. Uh, the belt wash would be coming through that hydrazine and uh, vibrating screen. And then we either go to a dispatch machine or for clarification, or if we want to have a little bit of pulp in it, we go directly to a bulk tank and then it is filled. Normally either in a, what we call high pressure HPP or uh, could be a uh, hot pack and uh, uh, for glass or some kind of filler to that situation. If we look at a straight apple line, uh, we've done quite a few full apple lines where we will have washers and then conveying and then into uh, belt presses. Now this product will be what we call cloudy apple juice. They will put a little vitamin C in it, into it. Uh, so you had your vitamin uh, portfolio in that product, and then a very fresh, uh, nice mouthfeel product. As you can see with your belt presses, we can raise the uh, product line in the press itself. We can control the, the width and the height, you know, of the product so that we are getting excellent yield excellent quality um, and in this case uh, there's no heat whatsoever uh, to this product uh, much uh, better yield and uh, high high quality in vitamins and uh, a really nice flavor juice a little bit but not as tart per se as a cider because it's a cider we do a little bit extra work on that product for a flavor profile some of the apple plants you know, we've done, you know, complete uh, products. If we look at capacities available, we do uh, from, uh, you know, small, uh, say two tons an hour up to those very large presses that we have done in China that are 25 tons an hour with yields up to 84%. Now, what we can also do is we can take the pumice coming off uh, of these presses here, rewater it, rewash it, and uh, decant that, and that's what we would turn around and put into concentrate. So you could have a fresh line and also a concentrate line. What we have available is our decanter centrifuges for doing concentrate and also our distax for doing uh, uh, clarified juice. If we look at a standard general line, um, example as we bring in the first raw juice and we can either decant and go to the belt press or we can do enzyme treatment or we can heat so we can do berries apples all different kinds of products on, on the same process as well 
This is always really interesting because most of the carrots that are processed here in the U.S. come out of uh, Bakersfield, California. And two of the biggest uh, carrot processors are either Grimway Farms or Bolt House. And in both cases here, we do most of the centrifuges for those facilities and for making the yeah, um, carrot juice concentrates. Now, the markets predominantly have always been products that are sent overseas because carrot Carrot juice has always been a really big seller into uh, a, the Asian uh, market. Very high yield. And then the pumice that comes off of the canners we press uh, to uh, get our yield up. Once we get another full apple plant, set up for decanning with juice, some specialty equipment also involved in reference to extraction and uh, uh, our pumps in that situation. Now, as we look at uh, a big market in the last few years has been the green juice market. Um, we're looking at spinach, celery, all different kinds of uh, ginger, all different kinds of products. There is numerous uh, products that are sitting on the grocery shelf. Uh, the price point's quite a bit higher but it's much better in reference to quality, flavor, vitamins. And this is where uh, our friends from Franco and Neil and I have done quite a bit of work together because we use the Franco grinders in the front end of uh, these processes to give us really good dispersion through these uh, difficult products to uh, grind, predominantly celery, spinach, kale, uh, and these products, these, uh, these are all pressed. They are um, filled through uh, what we call HPP. So it's cold pressed. Uh, you walk into these facilities, you gotta wear a jacket because it's about 40 degrees. It's a little really chilly. You'll definitely see your breath. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a pretty amazing line to watch how these uh, systems work out. As we get into other products around the world, we do a lot of work on you know, pineapple in reference to pressing pineapple heads. That used to be a waste product. And uh, some of our partners in, in that market, uh, we put in complete custom design lines so that we can actually press that pineapple head now. We've gotten their yields up by over 10% by press, pressing up in this area right in here. Uh, if I'm pointing at that pineapple head, you'll, that's on your screens. And as you cut, we cut off the back side of uh, the top of the pineapple, but we press those heads and we get that yield up there also. We can press fruit, uh, berries and uh, strawberries, we, uh, grapes, and we did predominantly don't press grapes. We normally use those through uh, centrifuges and decanters, but a lot of these products here we can press and, and get a really nice quality juice great dimension in flavor, uh, particle size, and consistency with a nice vitamin base to it. Today, we're going to uh, have our friends from Karenko, and I'm just gonna push the button for Neil as he starts to talk with you about size reduction. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna grab the mic from Neil and let okay. him take over after me. Um, so, uh, I think the main question that uh, Neil brought me on for is, uh, you know, kind of why size reduction matters. Um, the front end of the processing systems are generally pretty overlooked. And I just wanted to illustrate uh, what the issue is, why it's an issue. Uh, and then uh, we'll get into some of the background and details. But uh, if you can imagine trying to extract juice from an apple just by grabbing, you know, by picking up an apple, okay, you have the apple in your hand. Now, how do you get the juice out, right? Uh, you can sit there and squeeze that apple. You might get a couple of drops out of it that way. Um, that is no size reduction, right? Obviously. Um, you can also puree the apple. And when you try to apply pressure to it, the, you got applesauce, it's gonna come out of your hands. You don't really get much yield that way either. So the, the easiest way to uh, uh, illustrate what the problem is, is what is the ideal grind for that apple in order to achieve maximum juice yield? And what you'll find is that every product that you encounter that you're trying to get juice out of has an optimal grinding point. 
And uh, if you grind it too far, you end up plugging pressing media, you end up with overly costly clarification. Um, and if you undergrind it, you don't get the yield that you're looking for. So those are the trade-offs uh, in, in uh, single strength juice, um, which is uh, uh, NFC and, uh, and why uh, size reduction matters. Um, I was also asked to provide a, like a financial uh, picture of why it matters. And uh, I, I could save that for later if you'd like, Neil, or I could do it right now. Sure. Yeah. You want me to do it now? So, uh, or, or do it later. Your choice. Uh, whatever works for you. We're, we're into it now. Let's go. Okay. All right. So, uh, the, when we first started putting these systems together for people, we were actually approached by a press manufacturer. It was a, um, it was a, uh, <laughs> it, it was basically a belt press, but it was a, a, a single stage. It, it's hard to explain, but it was a, a piece of equipment developed by Atlas Pacific. They, they don't make it anymore. So I feel free to name it. But uh, it was basically a rack and clock press that was intermittent. So the, uh, it would come down and press in one station, and then it would move over and it would refill and press again. And they couldn't get the press to work because the consistency of the grind wasn't right for that application. It's a very batch process. It's kind of a batch process or, or a continuous batch is, I think, the, the way they termed it. And uh, uh, so they couldn't even get the piece of equipment to work. But uh, so we uh, developed a, a grinding system and we'll show you uh, what this looks like a little bit later for producing a nice even particulate for that system. And they were actually able to get it to work. When we applied that same system to other technologies like screw presses and uh, uh, rack, and uh, rack and clock presses and belt presses, we discovered that it would improve the yield for it. So we started to sell these systems on the basis of yield. And I, uh, I can illustrate what a difference this makes by just pointing out that for apples, a 2% yield difference in a large system, which would be like a 17 ton per hour system, uh, amounts to uh, about 68 gallons per ton. Uh, excuse me, about 68 gallons per hour. And uh, that 68 gallons per hour, it's two, two, two gallons, four, it's, excuse me, it's four gallons per ton, 17 tons per hour, 68 gallons per hour. So if, uh, if your juice is selling for, uh, if it's a very cheap juice, it would sell for maybe a dollar a gallon. Uh, a very expensive juice would be $10 a gallon. Let's take the high end on this. That's $10,000 a day if you're running two shifts in yield improvement. Um, which obviously is going to pay for the equipment very quickly. So that's just a, a quick illustration, back of the napkin, of, of how a, even a very small difference in yield can make a very large difference on the bottom line. Well put. Thanks. Next one, guys. Uh, yeah, we can go on to the next slide, and we've gone through uh, the yields. Um, it's okay. You can just take them one at a time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just go, just march through. Uh, and this is on there, but there is, uh, yeah, almost a 200, uh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. Almost 200 billion a year by 20, uh, 27. So there's definitely a lot of money to go around. That's the juice market in the U S fruits and vegetables. Um, or yeah. Oh no, that's global. global. That's, that's global. global. Right. global. Uh, go ahead. Next slide. Uh, Yep. Uh, anybody that is, uh, you know, getting the most out of their, um, you know, product uh, and, and not leaving uh, anything else, um, you know, it's uh, like you were saying, Chris, where it's, it's, it's kind of like waste management. You know, if, if you're managing your waste and getting the most out of your product, um, then you're going to be the best in the market. Next slide. Uh, so, uh, this is paired with, uh, <clears throat> that, that's a, a centrifuge, right, John? Yeah, that's a Z5 centrifuge, yep. That's one of the centrifuges. Uh, and then next to that is one of our uh, 15D screw-fed units. Um, and that is what, is what has become very popular with the uh, uh, leafy greens, the, the hard-to-feed to uh, fruits and vegetables uh, that would normally want to stick, actually just get force-fed into the grinding chamber. Um, yeah, we actually uh, we actually developed that piece of equipment because we couldn't feed kale into the machine. It was adhering to the inlet of the grinder. So to get around that, we, we developed that piece of equipment. 
Uh, and then it's uh, also got the uh, horsepower behind it uh, for uh, things like uh, like ginger and all your very uh, fibrous products that are uh, a lot more difficult. Yeah, carrot, uh, carrot, celery, even kale, actually. Kale can be pretty difficult as well. Very much. Um, I think we're ready for the next slide. Uh, and then this is our uh, <coughs> screen sheets. And these are some of our round hole screens, but go ahead and um, connect, uh, click to the next slide, John, please. And uh, this is where you see a, uh, these are our, our standard uh, screen sizes. And uh, we've, we've done lots of uh, custom stuff. So we've got, you know, stuff that's, that's off of this uh, chart. But uh, so, Depending on the uh, on the product, um, we have this wide variety of different uh, screen sizes and um, uh, styles, and then also rotor combinations. Um, and then there's also the, uh, the the speed of the rotor itself. Uh, and there's all of these different uh, options that we have to uh, to improve yield. And so, if um, oh, for example. Uh, Early in the season, the fruit can be a bit um, can be a bit tougher, and so uh, it can uh, be very helpful to go to a, a finer grind size compared to later in the season when uh, the fruit gets a little softer and it's uh, it's better to um, grind with a bigger uh, screen. Uh, and that is primarily the uh, the shredder screens uh, for for certain fruits and vegetables, but it gets all over the place with all different products. Um, what else did we want to go on that? Um, the, yeah. So when, when you're, when you're, when you're grinding along, uh, it's, it's really important to have, uh, a, a backup screen and rotor, but then, uh, you know, also some, some different sizes, uh, above and below, um, and and we we encourage people that have our equipment to give us a call and uh, say hey you know we're we're just not getting the yield that we uh, you know we're getting you know and th this is where we can work with you guys and um, explore different uh, screen sizes and um, really figure out if you're getting uh, the most yield that you can um, yeah. and that's uh, something that we really really like to do here at Karenko um, so it's not just the size reduction stuff and um, you know, grinding everything uh, as fast and as fine as you can. It's it, it's also about uh, finding that you know maximum the sweet spot um, for everybody. Yeah. If, yeah. If, so, if, I could, if I could put one word in here, uh, you know, for for people that are listening to this, you know, normally if we look at chemically, we by adding enzymes, we used to open up the pores of the fruit. Now, when we're doing uh, cold press products and there's no enzyme addition, we have to do this mechanically. And this is why the Karenko product line works out so well for us, because yeah. it opens up the pores, it opens up and allows the juice to come forward, and I can more product, more juice across the fruit, a better consistency in, in size allows me to press and get a much better yield in the finished product. Yeah, so this is an integral part of what's in front. You know, there's a lot of uh, customers I've had in the past were using existing milling equipment from the, their, their previous uh, suppliers. And eventually within a year or so, I see a brand new Karenko sitting in front of it, in, in front of these self press lines now. And the yields have come up 10 to 12% in reference to getting a much better quality of product coming into the press. Yeah, for mechanical extraction, it really is uh, important. And, uh, and so we, that's kind of our bread and butter. It's where we started out. And as this market's developed, and it really has to taken off over the last 10 years, it's crazy. I mean, prior to that time, it was almost all soft fruit. And now there's just tons of vegetables that are in that market. And they, every, like I said before, every product has a slightly different requirement. Um, so yeah, it's, it's uh, we end up doing a lot of troubleshooting uh, with, with customers that are like bringing new stuff in. They'll be grinding along and, trying to do something new and all of a sudden we'll get that phone call. It's like, Hey, you know, our uh, capacity is off 50%. What's going on here. And uh, it's usually something pretty simple, but uh, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated too. Uh, and the, um, and the, the, the products are getting um, uh, more and more uh, odd uh, 
they're like, uh, we're going to do jackfruit. 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 I've never heard of a jackfruit before. So um, when it comes to exotic fruits and, uh, and, and stuff that, especially if we've never grinded it before, uh, if we've never ground it before, we would uh, we would love to test it. We love to test new products, um, yeah, anything that uh, that we haven't done a million times, like apples. Um, we we encourage the testing, and uh, and that is that is free if you provide the product. And I think we have another one more slide, yeah. uh, and that's uh, just a reminder that uh, if you go to karenco.biz. Uh, there's the, uh, you can download the guide to high yield extraction. There's a big button right there on the, uh, homepage. Um, and I think that that's about, uh, all the, all the we can had, and we can open this up to, um, uh, questions. Uh, have we got any questions that popped in? Yeah. Okay. So again, thanks guys for presenting so far. I just want to introduce myself again to so folks that haven't uh, seen me since the beginning. I'm Daniel Lakovich, business development for Flawag. Thanks for being here. John, you want to pop on to that next slide? That's got your guys' contact information. That gives folks a chance to write those uh, details down right now. If you want to contact immediately, if you just can't wait to talk to somebody, <laughs> right now, call us today. <laughs> um, all right, so we got we got some questions until, but before we get to the question, I want to like just queue up one of these poll questions. Uh, Bridget, um, let's see how much material, fruits or vegetables folks are grinding. All right, so we'd like to hear from you. If you're doing this now, go ahead and click one of those buttons. Uh, we'd love to hear how much material you're uh, processing. Uh, gives us kind of an idea what folks that are participating in these presentations are doing. So go ahead and click one of those. So while we're waiting folk, on folks to answer that, why don't we queue up a question for you guys to answer? All right. One of the questions we had to come in. Um, so what pump would you recommend for getting this material? I suppose that's going to the grinder. Uh, and, and that is a great question. Um, so we typically like the progressive cavity pumps, would you say is probably your most favorite? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and more than anything, just an, an adequate pump for the process. Um, there have been times where we've been asked to, uh, to grind finer so the pump can pump it. And that's, that's not a good answer. We, we, want, we want you to say, that we need to grind finder to maximize our yield, not to accommodate a pump. So uh, it's uh, I, ideal to get a, a good pump that is um, ad adequate for your, your process and we don't have to cater to it. That's a good point. I think we have that in some instances with our centrifuges as well, especially as we're moving away the solid side. Um, so that's a very, very knowledgeable point there. Uh, Bridget, why don't you queue up that next poll question, please? Um, just a general question. Are you batch or continuous processing in your system currently? Uh, so I'd like to hear from you about that. If you do have any other questions, uh, while I'm asking this next one, bottom center of your screen, there's a small Q and A button. Uh, any questions you might have, please click that button and ask it there. Uh, okay, another question, I think another grind question here. Can I extract multiple fruits and or vegetables at the same time? I'll let you take that. Okay, Chris, okay. yeah, yeah. You, you can do it, might not be the best thing. Yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, the answer is yes. Um, and sometimes sometimes it's beneficial too because you can, uh, you can grind some things that are extremely difficult, or excuse me, extract some things that are really difficult to extract by mixing them with things that are easy to extract. But uh, there will be some yield compromise on at least one of the constituents. So this, this is going to come out to sort of a dollars and cents game for the, for the person who's, um, who's doing this. I, I can think of one instance where it would be extremely helpful and that's when a company doesn't have any blending equipment. So they would basically just take the, the, the uh, constituents that they were planning on putting in their single strength juice, mm -hmm. uh, they, if they wanted pineapple, mango, uh, apple, and uh, berry mixed together, then they put all those ingredients into the grinder at the same time, and that would go into the extraction equipment, and you get that juice. 
Um, but of course, there, the, the optimal way of doing it would be to separate those into individual flows, optimize each juice for yield, and then blend the equipment or blend the juice afterwards. So you're either you're either uh, saving saving a, a significant amount of time because you just ground everything together and juiced everything together, uh, compared to grinding and extracting everything separately, giving you higher yield. So you would get more, but it would take longer, and that is the, uh, the that's compromise. the trade off. Understood. Understood. The, the, the one thing, that guys, I, I'd have to put in here too is. What happens is as, as these processes change, um, you know, going from a, say a mom and pop label where you made a small batch of the product and you bottle it and you sold it on the street. Now, the, today you've got to say, okay, well now I'm going to be running continuous. So you've really got to learn how to calculate what is really going to be, you know, your base, your base product behind all this. If, for instance, is it going to be a carrot? that is really your base beverage, and then you're gonna add everything to it, and it could be kale, celery, spinach, whatever, or is it you know, a spinach drink that you're going to add these other products to it? So, that, so really batching and really thinking about the product of running continuous versus batch, you know, you're gonna save a lot of money running continuous because you can turn around and minimal amount of people, especially when you're running a bell press, you can take, uh, probably four or five people off their processing line where they've been doing this manually so that they can do other jobs. And here you have one guy running the press. And as you turn around and, you know, set up your grinders and set up the rest of the process, you know, you can really get your cost per product out the door a lot cheaper, which is, you know, that's the only way you're going to make any money in this whole thing. That's my two cents in that. Yeah. Good info, John. Good info, uh, Neil, Chris, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last poll question up on the screen now, just to see how we did, uh, see if we can uh, improve on some things. Obviously, we're the best, so everybody <laughs> has, uh, learned everything you possibly know. No, of course you didn't. Um, please reach out to us. Uh, these guys are the pros. Um, you have the presentation that's going to be emailed out as well as a recording. So you can go back and uh, rewatch us again if you'd like. Um, I just want to thank you all again for being here. Again, I'm Daniel with uh, Flatway. We've got John as well, Neil, Chris. Thanks for being here. Stay healthy. Y'all stay healthy, stay fresh. We'll see <laughs> you on the next one. Thanks right. for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.